Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Hopeful Chewbacca back in the Church of Chewbacca, and we're going to go over the fifth inning showdown, give you guys those tips and tricks to knock each one of these mini missions out, as well as the first mini boss, which is the Diamond Jose Alvarado that you get from getting 150 program stars within the fifth inning program, as well as the final boss. This is going to be the first time ever that I'm going to show you guys a little bit of gameplay when it comes to the final boss and kind of what my strategy is at the plate. As well as I'm going to do a draft. So I'm going to complete this. I'm going to show you what my squad looks like at the end. And at the beginning of this video, I'm going to show a draft. It's not the draft for this particular run. But I'm going to show you kind of guys what my strategy is whenever I'm drafting in the beginning of these showdowns. And kind of what I'm looking for. What's going on in my head to kind of help you guys get these showdowns done especially with the set three affinities coming out there's going to be another showdown with those we're going to do a video about it but i kind of want you guys to get in the right mentality of drafting the proper team when you're doing these showdowns and what i look for when drafting a team so at the end of the video you guys will see whether or not i was successful in my fifth inning showdown run but i'm going to show you guys right now like i said in the intro is i'm going to show you guys how to draft your team when you do this fifth inning program and what's going on in my mind when drafting a team. So in this first round, no matter what, you're going to get an option of these three guys. I promise you, you will normally not get Mickey Mantle. If you get Mickey Mantle, look, I love me some Larry Walker. I love me some Big Poppy. Pick between Larry Walker or Big Poppy. That's probably going to be your best option. Do not pick Mariano Rivera. There's maybe two missions that you need a closer, three missions you need a closer, something like that. Pick one of the hitters. They're going to be more beneficial. In this situation, you do have the option to pick Mickey Mantle. I think that Mickey Mantle is the best option out of these four particular cards. Sometimes you just got to eat it and be like, look, I'm picking the best card. We're picking Mickey Mantle here. But I would normally pick Larry Walker. That's who you'll see whenever we get out of this draft that I went through with my run of the fifth inning showdown. So next, you come into this round and you have the option of picking Bill Mazeroski, Cliff Floyd, or Jose Alvarado, or Cattell Marte. It's always going to be another dime, and this time it's Cattell Marte. I personally don't like Cattell Marte. You do face a lot of lefties, so he might be pretty decent here. But I would pick Cliff Floyd. I think he has the best bat when it comes to um, these three cards. Next, you want to pick another really good hitter. I really like Jesus Sanchez, but J.D. Martinez is just a better hitter, better glitchy swing. This Farjo is pretty good too. You're going to pick J.D. Martinez here. Great power. And he actually mashes lefty, so it'll help you with some of the mini missions. Once again, another round of players. I think Josh Bell is the best power guy. He's a switch hitter. I'm going to go with Josh Bell. Next round here, you have some decent options. Brian Reynolds out of these four cards, these four silvers, is a switch hitter. He definitely has the best splits here. Daniel Murphy has a very glitchy swing too. Brian Reynolds is where you want to go here. Okay, so I mentioned you need a closing pitcher. If you can get a closing pitcher, as you can see, we're six out of nine rounds. We haven't seen a closing pitcher yet other than Alvarado and Rivera. You don't want to pick either one of those guys. You want to pick this Brandon Workman right here. There's some other good options here for players like this Miguel Aduhar is a very good player. But you want to pick Workman because you need a closing pitcher. When we go over the missions here in a second, you're going to know why I'm talking about you need a closing pitcher. You don't want to get stuck with a common. Next, 100% of the time in a silver round, if you see my man David Dahl, you pick him. David Dahl's a monster. Super glitchy swing. David Dahl all the time, all day, every day. For these perks, I'm going to pick off the radar to start. The other three are kind of useless. And then the bronze here, I'm going to go with Nerves of Steel. Um, You could do Battle Tested for some of the mini missions early on. Actually, let's do battle tested because you're going to have to pitch some later in innings. That's why you need the closer. So we'll do battle tested. All right, so we start this up. Manage the perks. Always assign your perks. All right, so we popped in the lineup screen here. And you're like, why do I have so many outfielders? You want to pick the best hitters, period. There will be missions where only hitting matters. When those are the missions, come in here and load in your hitters. Put whatever. You put David Dahl at second base. It doesn't matter. He's not going to play in the field. If it's only hitting mission, you don't have anything to do with pitching, put these guys in the in your lineup, bat them however you want, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Order-wise, it's all personal preference. But put all your hitters in there. The defense doesn't matter. If Brian Reynolds is a shortstop, throwing the ball into the stands and giving guys free runs, it doesn't matter if there's no type of mission that involves playing any type of defense. When defense matters, take your bronze and your commons and put them back in the defensive lineup. You'll know what missions involve defense are the ones that you need your closing pitcher that I will explain in a second here when we're going over each of the missions. As for pitchers, they're going to give you a bronze starter to start, and you want to pick a closer. 
Make sure your closer's in the closer spot. And then make sure you have your next best pitcher in your middle relief. So you want to move this Hector Rendon to middle relief because you're going to need him in one of the missions. And then make sure that you have your first setup guy as your third best pitcher. Guys, that's how you draft a team for these fifth inning showdowns. Highly recommend you do this. If you need some help, comment down below. I'll help you guys out with the draft. Just let me know. The first mission in the showdown I got is Mo Time. It's about Mariano Rivera holding the saves record for Major League Baseball. You got him out of comeback and score one run. You're down a run in the ninth inning against the Signature Series Mariano Rivera card. It's on rookie. You just got to score a run. You don't got to win the game. You don't got to do anything crazy. Just score one run on rookie. I think I hit a home run with the first or second guy. Not too bad of a mission. The next mission is Larry Booger Walker. This is just talking about how Larry Walker in 1997 had a ridiculous year. You have to tally four total bases in one inning with your showdown squad. Essentially, you hit a home run, that's four total bases. You get four singles, four total bases. You get three outs to get four total bases on rookie. Not too bad. In this mission, you're facing Kyle Freeman to start. He's a left-handed pitcher for the Colorado Rockies. Scary Sox with a one-run lead in the bottom of the ninth. You have to face the juiced Red Sox lineup of the prime Jacoby Ellsbury, the MVP Dustin Betroya, and the signature series David Ortiz. I'm not sure who the fourth batter is. I'm sure it's somebody else. It's ridiculous. Essentially, just to close out the game with your closer on rookie. Pretty easy mission. Next mission, Mile High Magic. Larry Walker got things off to a great start with the Rockies in his first game. So you got a total six total bases in a three-inning game against the Colorado Rockies. And you're facing Jermaine Marquez. Right, he throws pretty hard. Very easy to hit. You get nine outs to do this, essentially. It's on rookie. You guys should be able to knock this one out really easily. This is the first mission where the difficulty bumps up from rookie to veteran. And this is the greatest home run ever. It's talking about the walk-off from Bill Mazeroski against the Yankees in 1960. And pretty much you just have to score a run. You don't have to hit a home run. You just have to score a run on veteran. And you're facing Michael Feliz. He's a relief pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I believe he's a 70 overall. Not too bad of a mission. Pretty easy. Also, just so you guys know, these first set of missions, any mission batting, actually it's the entire thing. Any mission where you bat, you start off with your leadoff hitter. You don't start like fourth in the lineup, fifth in the lineup, whatever else. If guys are on base, not on base, you start off with your leadoff guy. The first showdown... And this is the mini boss showdown. One of the henchmen for this fifth inning boss is the diamond, Jose Alvarado. And you enter the game with the bases loaded. You get 10 outs to score three runs. This mission isn't too hard. It's only on veteran. Alvarado does have some really nasty stuff. He throws very hard, but he is wild. So be very, very patient. This will be very important for a mini mission that I'm going to talk about in a second here as well. The Alvarado, wild on the mound. Just make sure you pick good pitches. For example, in this show, I end up beating the first try, but he hit me with a two-seam fastball that was below the zone, and I hit into a double play to start. Like, that can be deadly to somebody that's not a better hitter, especially since you start with the bases loaded. So essentially, I had men on second and third because he threw the ball home, home to first double play, with only eight outs to still have to score three runs. Um, for me, it's not too big of a difficulty because I'm a pretty decent hitter. Not the best, but definitely above average. But just something to think about. Be very patient against this Jose Alvarado. The next mini mission, and you start earning two final showdown runs per mini mission, is Capable Cliff. You have to tally two extra base hits in a three-inning game with your showdown squad. Don't think it's that hard of a mission. You are facing the gold breakout Al Leiter from 2001. So it's another left-handed pitcher. So if you got some guys at this point in time that are pretty decent platoons against lefties, although I don't recommend picking lefty platoon guys necessarily unless there's like a unless they're like the only option however this mission isn't too too bad but it's still hard to get extra base hits sometimes it took me all three innings to get this one done this is pocho alvarado once again this is where it's important that alvarado is wild on veteran difficulty just to get on base two times without striking out i actually struck out with larry walker if i'm being honest uh, jose alvarado hit me with a slider that was low in a full count and I thought he was throwing a fastball because why would he throw a slider way out of the zone? But I should have just been patient in the full in the full count. You get two innings to do this, so I should have just took the strike out of it. It wasn't going to be a strike. I actually would have won with that because he already walked the batter in front of the Larry Walker. 
Just be very patient against Jose Alvarado. He's not an accurate pitcher. Big Poppy's the next mission. In this one, you have to score three runs in a three-inning game. You're facing Boston. There's Martin Perez, common left-handed pitcher on the mound. I believe he's a 63 overall. So you're not facing too good of a pitcher. Now, this is like a super-juiced version of the Boston Red Sox. So to score three runs can be a little bit difficult. Obviously, I didn't complete it this time. There's also a glitch within the mission. It'll say you have one more out than you really have. I believe it starts the mission by saying you have 10 outs. Well, in the three inning game, there's only nine outs. So once you get nine outs, it doesn't matter if it says you have an extra out or not. The mission will end. That's kind of what happened to me. It's on all-star difficulty, but against Martin Perez, he doesn't throw very hard. And he's a common pitcher. I hit the ball all over the place. I just didn't produce runs when I needed to. I also got thrown out at home. Just bad base running by me. Don't be over aggressive. You should be able to hit a common pitcher. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. Out with the cold. This is another that's on all-star difficulty for another two final showdown runs. And you have to recreate history of a scoreless inning to close out a game against the Yankees. The Yankees lineup that you do face is absolutely stacked. I believe you start out facing the 85 overall Curtis Granderson that we got early in the year as a player program. You face the 99 overall Mickey Mantle as well as another juiced Yankee. It's a pretty hard task. I really recommend picking a closer whenever you do the initial draft. And you guys have seen that. I mentioned that already. But this is why getting a closer is super important. I did this with a common closer whenever I did it. It's just not ideal in that situation. Raging Rocks. So this is pretty much facing an all-time Rockies lineup on all-star difficulty. You have to face a lineup that has Nolan Arenado, Larry Walker, and Todd Helton. You're down a run in the eighth inning. You're once again facing Kyle Freeland. You have to come back and win the game. The game can go as long as you need it to go. I won in nine innings. I hit a super clutch home run with someone you wouldn't expect in the top of the ninth inning, Jonathan VR. It was kind of surprising to me, but he blasted one over the fence for a three-run shot, put me up with a two-run lead. I could close it out. Also, something to recognize for this. You start out with one of your middle relief pitchers. I'll let you know which one is whenever we go in the lineup. I believe it's the first middle relief pitcher. Then the final showdown versus the Yankees is on veteran. You have to face Mariano Rivera with 20 outs, just like any final showdown. And it's based on how many final showdown runs you have to start. 11 to 15, so I only got to score five runs off of him. We're going to show you a little bit of game playing what my mindset is against this Mario, Mariano Rivera. But let's show you what the squad looks like first before we hop in here and show you a little bit of the gameplay. For your lineup, you're going to be looking at Pirates, Yankees, and Marlins pretty much period when it comes to hitters. So, I'm a huge fan of David Dahl. I mentioned David Dahl whenever I went over the NL West showdown. He's one of my favorite non gold or diamond hitters in the entire game super glitchy swing great hitter i recommend picking him 100 percent of the time if he's available early on jesus sanchez got him at center field here good lefty definitely will help against the righties larry walker picked up blackman in one of the diamond things as you guys can see i'm f i focus on a lot of left-handed bats because the end game is mariano rivera as long as I can beat the Jose alvarado early on i don't care about any of the other missions i want to stack up guys that hit right-handed pitching well but early on, whenever I'm picking, guys like Gio Urshela and Luke Voigt are great pickups. Brian Reynolds is a switch hitter that's another good guy to pick up early on. Jonathan VR has a way better bat than what it looks like attributes-wise. He kind of reminds me of Alberto Mondesi, just plays a second base. He's not as good as Mondesi, not as fast, but he definitely has a lot of pop in his bat. That's why I mentioned a surprise home run whenever I was mentioning the Rockies mission. But really, he's always had pop for me. Looking at the pitchers... I picked a starter not knowing what the missions were going in. However, you don't need a starter at all. None of the missions where you have a starting pitcher require your starting pitcher to be good at pitching. Because you can let up as many runs as you want because they're all hitting-based missions. You do need a closer. Doing this with a 64 closer and Fernando Salas was not a fun experience. I'm a very good pitcher at this game. I know I'm kind of tooting my own horn. I'm not being egotistical or anything. The only reason I even make it to where I make it in ranked seasons when I do play enough ranked seasons to make it up in the higher difficulties is because I pitch well. I'm not the best hitter. I'm above average. I will bat about 300, maybe 325 max if I'm having a good ranked seasons stretch. So pitching is where I win my games. I'm a very good pitcher. I mix my pitches well against the computer, against users, period. Doing it with a common pitcher was very, very hard for me. I can imagine a person that's not that good at pitching and more of a better hitter struggling when it comes to 
pitching if you don't have a better closer. Just so you guys know, I know I emphasized that in the draft whenever I was drafting to pick up a closer when you see one available because it gives you all comments. So that was my lineup for this. Let's go in and play a little bit of Mariano Rivera and I'll show you kind of my strategy. It's going to be a very shortened game plan. I'm probably just going to show you the hits and the patience and the pitch count because the biggest thing with this stuff is to be patient. All right, so we got the first batter here. It's David Dahl and I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to pull my controller down. I'm going to take it till I have at least two strikes early on. It's very important to know that Mariano Rivera is a closer. So as a closer, he cannot throw too many pitches because he only has like 33 stamina or 35 stamina, which means he can throw about 35 to 40 pitches before he fatigues. So you want to run up his pitch count. Now we have two strikes, so now we're going to lock in here. Be very patient still, but if you see a ball, you can hit, hit it. It's unfortunate. Mickey Mantle flagged that down pretty easily, though. Get in the gap, baby. Let's go. All right, so we got a single with Larry Walker right there. Here's a big thing about these showdowns is I probably could have ran home with Luke Gehrig, but I didn't. I was very, very conservative. Remember, you always have 19 outs to play with no reason to run it run the guy at home and possibly get an extra out right there. There's no point to do that. Be conservative with running the base pass. It's unfortunate right there. Hit a little dribbler with Charlie Black. Oh, Good old ugly chopper over the first baseman's head. We snuckily got another run, but we didn't do a double play. That's not really what we wanted. <clears throat> oh, but what I wanted to show you guys right here is, look, he's thrown 30 pitches. He's about halfway done on his stamina. We're only in the seventh batter, so we faced six batters. So I got him averaging about five pitches a batter. That's very good. We're wearing him out. His confidence is going to go down. His energy is going to go down when we get more hits here. That double play didn't help with his confidence, obviously. But just something I wanted to talk to you guys about is just one of those things where you really have to work him. I'm just ahead on everything because I'm not used to playing on veteran. So, and it's my first game of the day. I literally woke up to make this video first game. So, it's just one of those things where my time's a little bit off right now. This, this uh, Mariano Rivera doesn't seem too, too hard to hit either. Get in the gap. All right, we got another hit in the gap there with Jesus Sanchez. Pretty good. Oh, I cheated a little bit, so I'll get the first pitch. So right there is like a really deep fly ball, even though Mickey Mantle's good. I took advantage, took an extra base. Um, just kind of want to put the pressure on them. I'm going to pinch hit Josh Bell here for the pitcher. You always want to pinch hit somebody for your pitcher. There's no reason for your pitcher to bat. That pitch there, I just seen that Rivera was hanging a slider, wanted to try to drive it. Didn't get all of it, but still a good hit. If you see a pitch you guys think you can really drive, like an inside pitch or something that's like hung like a slider like that, just take advantage of it and swing at it. But don't do that on a regular basis. Still be patient. There we go. We pull a little more pressure. Got another sack fly. So we need two more runs with 14 outs left here. Alright, so we're sitting at 42 pitches now. Rivera, Rivera is into the yellow energy. That's what we like to see. And we still have 14 outs to play with. And he's starting to fatigue. His confidence is down a little bit because we scored a couple runs. This is really where you want to capitalize on any hung pitches. We want to slap them even if it's not two strikes. But still be patient here, guys. Once he gets into that yellow fatigue, though, you really want to be a little bit more aggressive. Nice. 
Nice little slap hit with Gary there. There we go. Got one down the line with Larry Walker. He hung that cutter. All right, so that was really big right there. Is as you've seen, I went down the line with Larry Walker. I probably could have scored with Lou Gehrig because Reggie Jackson was over there kicking the ball around in the corner, right? And then he doesn't have a great arm. I know that about Reggie Jackson because he's the 99 overalls in right field. But instead of being aggressive and taking that chance and possibly getting an out right there, I just let it ride. You have an extra out, and you have 14 outs now to literally just get a guy home on a sack fly or anything like that. They push the infield in. That's what I mean by not running the bases too aggressive because there's no need to run them aggressive. You have more than enough outs. Don't run yourself into bad situations and give the computer outs in these showdowns. Um, I've done it before. I'm sure a lot of people do that. That's the biggest thing I learned from doing all these showdowns and doing these tutorials is don't give the computer extra outs. You shouldn't be giving them. Got a sack fly. We're going to win it right here. Easy mission accomplished. Look, guys, look. Here's the thing is it doesn't have to be pretty when you guys win these showdowns. I literally scored every single run from sacrifice flies pretty much hitting the double plays. Because I was patient. I worked Mariano Rivera. I also had a very good amount of runs already when it was 11 to 15. But as you guys see, I had 10 hits. No home runs, nothing crazy. Very patient at the plate. Very patient when running the bases. Didn't take extra chances. I'm telling you, it makes these showdowns a heck of a lot easier. I hope these tips for hitting with this showdown helped you guys. If you guys did like them, let me know in the comments below. Whenever I do showdowns, I'll include some gameplay. It can make the videos a little bit longer. That's what you guys want to see is a little bit of gameplay. Just don't get daunted when you guys pop up the video. Like, why is this video 18 minutes? Instead of Chewy's been popping out like 10, 12, 15 minute videos. A little bit shorter ones. A little bit easier, more palatable to consume. It's because I'm going to put some gameplay at the end of them. That's what you guys like. But I got to know that you guys like it. So you guys have to comment below and let me know. We've completed the showdown. Proof right there for the showdown success. All right, guys, that wraps up the fifth inning showdown. Hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload videos. Comment down below to let me know what you guys liked about this showdown video, what you guys didn't like. That way I can keep improving these, especially with the set three affinities coming out. There's going to be some showdowns with that. I want to make sure I'm making you guys the most productive videos for you as subscribers and viewers, not for what... Hopeful Chewbacca likes the best to do. The channel's about you guys informing you guys and helping you guys out. Therefore, I need to know what you guys think. You guys have a great day and be safe.